Okay, welcome. This is Brody. Welcome to my channel, Art Scene Investigation. Basically my journey through the modern art world, mostly consisting of street art, NFTs, and some cool contemporary stuff. So, subscriptions, likes, comments, especially comments. Definitely need a lot of those just to kind of help me navigate through the art world a bit. So the idea behind this channel was to possibly report art news on the daily, but uh, it's art news itself. I mean, art, of course, super excited and super fun. We're living through some of the a great period of art right now, both contemporary, digital art. I mean, it's a pretty amazing time. There's so many incredible things to see, uh, places to go, just visual stuff that's just amazing, amazing, amazing. Reporting art news is like boring. It's like, okay, so like I'm at art news right here, right? So Mark Glimmer, CEO of Pace Gallery and Lauren Powell Jobs, Jobs, Immersion Collective have stepped back from Super Blue. All right. Super Blue is the highest profile attempt among the fine art establishment capitalized on the immersive experience art craze that has swept the world. The immersive art experience with, I don't know. I hear a lot about this immersive stuff and uh, you know and they found a couple of them like in, like the van gogh thing and i don't know just uh i hear good things about it create that ready player one experience that i don't think it's here yet the defining artworks of 2020 you know i i, I personally don't like any of these retrospect things okay let's see what's what's hip and happening early stays on still life in cincinnati may contain hidden portrait all right let's let we like that we like that word i definitely lean towards conspiracy in the art world um if you if you've seen a couple of my previous videos which i only have like one or two of them have a really high interest in that okay paul Cezanne, still life with bread and eggs 1865 a Cincinnati art museum chief conservatory has chief conservator has discovered what could be a self-portrait by a young paul Cezanne beneath a moody still life painted when the artist was about 26 years old Serena Serena Uri was in the middle of a routine examination. <laughs> Doctor Uri, uh, routine examination of Cezanne's still life with bread and egg in 1865 to see if the work needed cleaning. When she discovered small cracks under which shone a bright white paint that clearly wasn't part of the still life, according to a release from the museum. Uh, on a hunch. She had the painting the X-ray. The resulting digital image reveals a well-defined portrait hidden beneath the still life with features that suggest the subject of the newly discovered work may have been Cezanne himself. Ooh, that's pretty cool. Okay, uh, then it says related articles. Brad Pitt shows his art. Momo, chief photographer photography curate department and more morning links brad pictures is art right, mama okay so when they you know as probably a number of you people out there because i know you guys are much more knowledgeable about art and the art scene than i am so brad pitt astute collector i mean you know he actually has on a number of occasions like you know flew in to art basel proper in basel switzerland um and just kind of walking around and i guess you know and in, in switzerland the thing about switzerland uh, especially the town of basel it's like you know he's just like some guy that flew in <laughs> he's buying art and that's that's pretty much it um you know it's just like yeah so Okay, so to receive morning links, okay, which, which, what's the part? Okay, it's the pits, the artworks by, oh, this is by, by, by Brad Pitt. This is some of them, this is, that is, some of them are on display in Temper, Finland at the Sarah Hilden Art Museum, TMZ reports. In a new show there, Pitt is showing recent works alongside sculptures by his friend, Thomas Hughes, Husego, whom Pitt reportedly counts as a close friend. According to TMZ, Pitt never made it to the opening of the exhibit, which also includes works by the composer Nick Cave. Love Nick Cave. 
Any of you that are old enough to know who Nick Cave is, probably love him too. Seminal, seminal uh, recordings. I'm also into music, so uh, yeah, Nick Cave is an amazing, amazing, iconic figure in, well, the, I'd say, uh, you could broadly say the underground music scene. Uh, but for those interested in traveling to see the exhibition, Tamper is only a short train ride from Helsinki. Yeah, thanks. I live in New York, buddy. Click on the hyperlink. Maybe we could sh- see some of the artwork because it says on display. Man, TMZ artwork on display. It's just a hyperlink that kind of goes nowhere. Okay. Oh, that's it on that's that's pretty much all they got on Brad Pitt. Okay, wow. Um, photography dispatch, securator. Clement Chirot, a star of the Museum of Modern Art, will leave his post as chief curator of photography. The New York Times reports he's set to head back to France, where he will now serve as director of the Henri Cartier-Bresson Foundation. He's only been at MoMA for two years. can hack it, huh? Guardian took a deep dive into a picture by the photographer William Klein, who died last week. The shot taken in Rome on commission for French Vogue nails the right mix, monochrome, cool, and traffic chaos that he wanted. Let's read a little bit about William Klein's passing. William Klein, who revolutionized photography with electric chronicles, of cities has died at 96. Photographer director William Klein attends Fashion and Klein. William Klein public review at Paul Kigali on November 11, 2021, in Paris, France. William Klein, the visual artist who revolutionized photography with satirical fashion shoot and a masterful conduction of the restless electric energy of cities, dies on Saturday in Paris at 96. His death came during the final days of a survey at New York's International Center of Photography, which explored and honored the innovation of his 60-year career. That's pretty amazing. Uh, Klein was one of the most celebrated photographers of the 20th century, though his exuberant oeuvre uh, spanned painting, sculpture, feature film, and documentary. In an era where minimalism ruled, he followed an ethos of maximum Humanity. Hey, I like this guy. Anyone that preaches maximum humanity is pretty amazing in my book. All the exuberance, violence, and offbeat beauty a city contains. He flouted uh, conventions of photography using high contrast black and white, wide angle lenses, and overexposed negatives, so even still subjects appeared in motion. His special was spontaneous portraiture. Like two of his most famous works, a 1959 image of, of a Moscow woman in a bikini, so vital she could so vital she could burst from the print and the earlier Gun One New York from 1954 that depicts a snarling boy aiming a revolver at the viewer. Another child stares at him with an adoring expression. Klein called it a double self-portrait. Cool. Surely unsettling viewing at the time, it's nauseating amid today's gun epidemic, as if Klein camera could peer into the future. He was interested in normal people, but also those with influence like Muhammad Ali and the Black Panther leader and writer Aldrich Cleaver, both of whom were portrayed in his documentaries. Klein was born in Manhattan, 1928, New York baby. Uh, by 1948, he was studying painting and sculpture at the Sorbonne, thanks to G.I. Bill. Uh, f- wow, that G.I. Bill was kind of useful at some point, huh? Fernand Le- Leisure was briefly his mentor, but Klein's relationship with conventional education was brief. Leisure reportedly called, told Klein, get out of the galleries, look at buildings, go out into the streets. You know, there are some really amazing people in the artwork at one point. Uh, there still are, just, you know, it's like, that's just, just way beyond cool to see those types type of quotes and those type of mentors um encouraging doing stuff and 